this estate you see right now represent the Africa that you don't see on TV. And when I say Africa, it's super huge. This estate that you see right now is the Kenya you don't see on TV. And anytime we show you beautiful estates, you guys are trying to tell us that, you know what, this is beautiful, this is in Africa, but it's not made by an African. You know what, this is why I'm here. This estate that you're seeing right here was developed and built by an African woman and I just can't wait to go and speak to her for her to share her story with me. I know and believe that you will be inspired as much as I am going to enjoy this amazing interview. Do me a favor if you are new to the channel, like this video, it's very important and since I'm going to speak to a woman, you know how we do it, you need to share so that it will inspire many young women out there and don't forget to subscribe and be part of the million family. Let's hit a million and if you hit a million which means that our stories will reach billions of people thank you so much and come with me as i go talk to the young inspiring woman who developed this beautiful estate that you see on your screen thank you leah i want to know how do you feel anytime you come in here um my eyes are filled with tears uh, I remember the journey where it started from the dream, from the tears, the heartache, the doubts. Is it ever going to be achieved? And to come and see that what I dreamt of, what I prayed for, that I will have houses that are filled with families, with children playing outside, with uh, women enjoying their kitchens and husbands enjoying their spaces, that it has come to be. And I thank the Lord that uh, indeed once he puts dreams in our hearts that we have what it takes to move forward, to go for it and those dreams are attainable. And so when I come here and I see children and I see families living here, I bless the Lord and I know that whatever we dream of, we can achieve it. What inspires you? I'm inspired every day to become a better person, to become a better me that uh, my day to day is going to be better than it was yesterday to strive for better to strive to do well to strive to be uh, as an entrepreneur in this country to employ more people to create more jobs to grow my economy and that the economy of africa will be grown and the narrative of africa gets changed and it is it can only be changed by us as africans and how does it feel like being a female entrepreneur uh, it's amazing uh, we have potential, whether uh, I mean a female entrepreneur, I'm a male entrepreneur, we have, what, we have the answers for Africa. And I feel as, as a woman, we, I'm a born nurture, I'm a nurture. We birth, we bring up our children, we bring up our families. So we have what it takes to grow and, and bring up life and bring birth good, huge dreams and big dreams and take Africa to the next level. Do you know that you're one of the most inspiring women that has ever lived in Africa? Wow, that's very humbling for you to say. What has, has anyone ever told you that? Yeah, I think a lot of my friends uh, say that uh, people need to hear you. People need to, you know, know your stories and uh, yeah, it's inspiring. You that's look so young say. though. I am not young. <laughs> <laughs> but but what, what you've been able to achieve, I think it deserves a round of applause, man. Oh. Can you all help me clap for her? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to know my first question here. When you hear the name Africa, hmm. what comes into your mind? Um, I think resources, uh, resourceful. I think beauty. I think... Uh, a lot of potential, yeah. I feel like uh, we have a lot of potential as Africa, as, uh, as a continent. We, have, uh, we are very resourceful. We have a lot of resources uh, within us. And we also have resources in us as a people. Africans are very hardworking. Um, we, we are very diverse. And if we only looked within us, we have the answers for the world. You have the answer for Kenya. 
you know what you've done mm. i think a lot of people need to know what you've done first of all before i tell people what you've done my name is wadamaya the one and only annoying village boy from ghana i heard about you a lot of people are telling me you cannot go to kenya without talking to leah is your name leah yeah leah. Oh, what is your full name by the way leah one boy leah one boy yeah and uh, are you born and raised in kenya yes born and raised i'm a you, kenyan girl you, oh a kenyan girl you ever left kenya never just to visit just to business visit. trips but i've never lived outside kenya you've never lived abroad no, no never so whatever you've achieved you achieved it right here in kenya yes so does it mean that it's possible in kenya oh definitely we have all the resources we have what it takes to make it in africa where we are right now this is um an estate that was built and developed by leah wambo wamboy wamboy you know what Tell me something. Let's know. Let us know how it all started. I mean, were you born a developer? <laughs> no. You schooled in Kenya. Schooled in Kenya, yeah. After school, what happened? Um, I, I like I said, I've lived in Kenya. I have not left the country. Uh, but growing up, I grew up uh, in entrepreneurial family. My father, my mother was an entrepreneur, my uncles, my aunties, that's what I saw. They were business people and I really admire that. But there's one particular person that uh, I really admired throughout my life and that was my auntie. She's the sister to my mother. And when my mom passed on at the age of 16, she took me in and she brought me up. But even when I was a little girl, I always wanted to be like her. I admired that she would travel the world and she looked nice, she had very nice things and I always wanted to have nice things and uh, you know everything nice like in a nice house, in a nice car, uh, looking nice, she always, always looked very nice. So growing up uh, with her, uh, holidays I would go, she had a shop, I would go to the shop and she was a distributor for various things. So I would go to the shop and I think I honed some business skill from her. Okay. So when I went to, when I finished school, I was to go to campus, but I dropped out because uh, we, there were no resources. And uh, I got a, a job as a receptionist. So I started there. And uh, I remember within the first few months, I realized that I, I think I did want that. Um, I would want to get into the business world because what I dreamed of, and when I looked at my colleagues there, the, the amount of money that they were making, I felt maybe that's not what I want for the rest of my life. I wanted more and I wanted uh, much better. So I immediately, I, asked, I talked to my auntie. I said I would want to start out something like what she was doing in Mombasa. I would want to start it in Nairobi, but the, the amount of money that she could get was only enough to go start out somewhere in a small town in Kiambu, just out, outside yeah. of Nairobi. So I went to Kiambu and started um, Wines and Spirit Shop. And um, so I would uh, try and sell as much as I can. But business was not picking up. And I joined a lot of women group. We call them chamas in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I, I joined a lot of chamas where you do table banking. You, you do your savings, then you, le you lend money like that. And so one particular time, um, I got to be able to borrow 100,000 shillings. And I overheard uh, some of my chama people say that somebody had borrowed the money and bought a car. I asked, how much does a car cost? <laughs> and they said, uh, he bought it for 140000 I said, okay, when I borrow my money, I want you to take me to go buy a car. What? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I went. Uh, when my money got out, I went and uh, we, uh, we bought a car. I added uh, 40000 and we bought a car for 140. And when I drove that car home, I told myself, oh my goodness, this car has to make money for me. Because, I, I mean, I was 24 and I thought, I, I, I got to do something. And I was always very hungry. I always wanted more and big. And I felt like I was not uh, reaching my potential mm. during that time. So I talked to a, a couple of people who used to uh, be distributors outside Nairobi. And they, I talked to one particular and he said he can show me uh, a route that he takes. So I went with him and uh, he took me around the route and when I came back, I said, I think I can also do it. So I came back, I didn't have money to buy stocks. So I took them on credit and I told the lady who was giving me, I told her, I'll pay you back when I, I'll pay you when I come back. So she gave me the stocks, I put it in my car and I got, I got somebody who just showed up at my shop and said, I can take you, we go around and try to sell. I said, okay, fine, let's go. So he came and um, he got into the car, we tried, we went selling. But by the time we reached the destination that we had hoped we would finish selling, we had not even done a third of what that we had taken. So I said, okay, fine. He said, let's go further. We'll go. So it took us like around a week 
going around trying to sell and you drive yeah we drove we drove around uh, around town went went like to the rift valley uh, rift valley region and by the time we were coming back it was a week we so were you sleeping then on oh, there are some cheap lodges outside <laughs> Nairobi. so you sleep there and we didn't have enough clothes you we came back with dust everywhere there's dust like the roads were really bad at that time i mean these houses are pretty beautiful i i, I never imagined that this is what i'm gonna see in here you know because when you told me that uh, real estate i mean i've i've taught a lot of real estate uh, in africa but this one stands out i feel like when women are developers they do something unique uh, let me know now now which means you became a real estate developer in the year 2015 end of the year 2015. i started actually november 2015 november 13th 2015 that's when i sank the borehole here i started with the borehole <laughs> we, I mean, we were in the middle of nowhere. We needed water, so I sank. Started sinking the borehole on the 13th of November. W was it difficult acquiring the land in here? Um, yes, it was first of all a challenge uh, because uh, I I actually drove drove the sides, and uh, I don't even know what led me to Kitengela, but I thought I wanted some big land. I did want. Uh, a small plot and um, I do I wanted something I wanted to bring people from apartments families I thought like myself where would I want to live where would I want to bring up my children so I, 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 I shied away from apartments and I wanted some nice land I wanted a family setting where kids can go out and play mm -hmm. and you know you, you as a mother in the house you you feel safe that your children are outside playing they can mingle with other children so as I drove here I saw um, I saw this land and actually I had I, gone to look at some other land which were plots mm -hmm. and the plots were like I don't know four or eight plots and that is what I could afford so I started conversations with the owner of that land and um, he we, we, we were almost going to the place, but I just, I felt in my heart, it didn't feel, it, did, it just, it didn't click in my heart. In the process of having conversations with that is when we met uh, the landowner for here. And he, first of all, dismissed me. <laughs> he didn't think I was serious or I was going to buy, I don't know. I said, okay, fine, we can't afford uh, the whole land. He was selling five acres. I couldn't, I could only like afford three acres. So I talked to him and uh, what happened is that it took long. The process of talking took long. So I would pay him some money as we, we are continuing to have these discussions. I pay him some other money. So by the time we were finishing, I finished buying the five, uh, the five acres. Then now we added another three. So we got uh, a total of eight. It's eight acres. So come now that end of the year, that's when we sank the boho. And uh, I sold my house. I so oh my husband had given me his blessings so he agreed that we sell our house we sold our house and we sold some shares that we had and some little savings that we had so I thought to start up this to start up this even though you don't know whether you're going to succeed let me tell you so what we thought because no there's no bank that was going to give me all the money that were required for the, I didn't even want to borrow what if I'm not able to pay what yeah so we thought okay fine let's work with what we have we can sell our house, we can sell off some of the shares that we had and some of the little savings that we had and figured maybe we can finish the first 10 houses because in my mind I thought it's going to take X amount of money. So we hit the ground running. We do the borehole, do the boundary wall and we started uh, the 10 houses. So I thought that within a particular time I'll have finished selling, uh, I'll have finished building the first 10 houses and uh, sell them. I thought, I mean, I'm building beautiful houses. Uh, we traveled to go buy the finishes. And when I, I went with my architect then, and I would pick the things that I was picking, and he kept telling me, this is not your house. <laughs> this is not your house. These are houses for selling. And I said, I want to pick things that I would want in my house. If I can live in that house, I don't want to sell it to anybody else. So by the time we were coming and we did the calculations, we thought we would sell the houses at 15 million. It was not possible. So we th said, let's try and sell at 17 million. And I had, um, I finished the show house. The first house was house number seven. And we invited people to come. And I was very excited. Yeah. People are going to buy. Yeah. I, th I thought, <laughs> I thought once we show, show the them. house, the, the show house, we're going to have clients. 
uh, I got into a road shock. People came, yes. Uh, of course, the people who come are your friends, your relatives, <laughs> not the actual buyers. Yes. If there are, they are quite few. Yeah. And the questions I was, uh, have you done any other project before? No. Yeah, but I'm not show. No. Um, are you an architect? Are you an interior designer? Are you? No. So the, the viability, first of all, was very questionable. Is, are these people, they're doing 10 houses. I'm telling you, we only had 10. They look like five because they had semi-detached. So they look like five blocks. Yeah. So even people uh, driving down the road, they'll say, what, are, what is going on there? Are they building like a hotel or what is that? <laughs> Let me tell you, I would stand here and people drive in. Find somewhere along the way, they just turn. They don't even get to the show house. They just turn and go back, go outside. So I, in the first year, the 2016, uh, mm. 2016 year, we did not even finish building the first 10 houses. You didn't finish? The money got finished. We have not finished building. We don't have any money. And we have not sold any houses. Stress checked in. Serious stress. I have a contractor on site. I have workers. I cannot afford to pay him. I cannot afford even to pay my own workers. People that I've employed directly. I... Every time I would go to the altar and pray. Please God. Please God. <laughs> Now, when I called people to the open, open day to come and see, yeah. they, kept, uh, they kept saying, ah, these houses are beautiful, but this is the wrong location. It can be done. You can sell a house in Kitengela for 17 million. It's a very beautiful house, but who's going to buy a house for 17 million in Kitengela? No, it can be done. I remember I met a, a friend of mine who had come. I, we met at a mall. And he said, oh, Leah, I was actually wanting to see you. I said, okay, how are you? Thank you for coming. I said, yes, you have done a good job. The house is beautiful. But we are just worried. Who is going, going to buy a 17 million house in Kitengela? I said, I'm, I'm going to sell. Oh, I said, I'm daring God. I told her, I'm daring God. When she had that, what would she say? She said, okay, okay. fine, let's wait and see. So I actually looked foolish and stupid to everybody. But that time I was filled with Wait. zeal. Like I'm going to sell these houses. I, I had the conviction in my heart that I was going to do it. So I continued. I actually went to London to try and sell the houses. I moved to churches in London. I talked and trying to, you know, people. trying to convince people to buy. I came back, of course, from London without even a single sale. So by the time we are getting to September now, I'm stressed out. We don't have any money, zero resources. I didn't even have money to fuel my own car. Wow. Zero resources. So I thought uh, this was, it was a good dream, but it's not possible. So that particular Sunday, I went to church and I prayed. I used to pray. I used to pray. I used to pray. I, I would lock myself in the office and pray and cry the whole time, stressed. Uh, People need their money. Suppliers were calling me because I would take credits and suppliers would call and say, we need our money, we need our money. And I didn't have any way of paying them. So that particular Sunday, I just wanted to tell you, I said, you know what, God, I, I know I've tried. I've done my best. I told people that I'm there in you. Please give me grace to carry my head, to hold my head high. That I tried, at least I tried, and I will not be ashamed. Give me the strength and uh, I'll move on, I accept, it cannot be done. And I think that for me was the turning point. When I made that prayer that day, it was the turning point because the coming week, I got a client who deposited the first deposit of 8 million shillings. After another day, I got a client who paid a million and would pay every million, like every two days. By the end of the week, I got another one who paid 7.5. In actual, before the end of that week, I had received over 16 million in deposits. Wow. An account that had not seen anything. I couldn't believe it. So we went back full swing. And I told my contractor, let's do it. <laughs> let's get moving. And uh, we moved. By the time we were closing that year, we had houses ready to Whoa. give. Yes. By the time we were going for Christmas. And come January, I told my contractor, excavate. We, we're building more. We're building more. <laughs> yes. He asked, Mama, Mama, you know, is yeah. Mama, yeah. like ma Mother. Yeah. He said, Mama, how many houses? I said, 28. He said, What? We couldn't do 10 houses now. You want to do 28. more than double? I said, Do it. Excavate. Do we have the money? We have the money. We didn't have money. I just said, The way you brought those clients to come and buy those houses, you are going to bring other clients to buy. 
And that's what uh, we did. So how many units did you build in here? 78. 70. 78. We build them in phases. Uh, okay. The first we built 10, then the second we built 28, and then the third we built 40. And um, all of them are sold out right now? Yeah, we thank God. We've sold them all out. I'm currently working with a billionaire. Wow. <laughs> I'm not. It's expensive to do such a project. But, um, but was it really worth it? Is it worth it? I actually really asked myself that question a lot of times because this was a project that we got to learn a lot. Um, we, we, I fired, there was a day I woke up and fired everybody because the syndicates of thuggery <laughs> that were happening, I would ship uh, tiles and they come and bring trucks at, in the night and take out the tiles and the, the uh, architect I believed to be like the project manager would collude with subcontractors and um, uh, inflate their, their invoices and he would, he would be receiving money. So in the end I have no regrets. I don't have any regrets that I got to build it. We didn't burn our fingers but we <sighs> barely, you know. Wow. So I bless the Lord and I thank the, God, the Lord for the journey because the learning has been great. What, what was the major challenge establishing these properties in here? Cash flows. Cash flows. We didn't borrow from the bank. We didn't have money. Cash flows was, was our greatest, greatest problem. And the business model that we took, that we're going to build, we, we build a few, we, we, we sell, and selling off plan. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping that once we start building, we'll get clients who come and buy, and we continue building. But... Uh, what I thank God is that I delivered for the people. Having to see clients who bought these houses buying the other project is, um, is, is such a blessing to my heart that they still believe in us and they ask, what other project are you doing? Oh, wow. You're building another project? Yes. Please, uh, is it possible to go and check that of one course, out? Of course, of course. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, Maya. Thank you. This is Royal Gates. So this is the sequel of Royal Finesse. And how many units are here? Uh, in total, we'll have uh, about 78 houses, but we have finished the first phase of 34 houses. It seems 78 is always the lucky number. I know, I didn't even plan for it. That's the number that we got when we tried to plan the land. So are you still selling? Yes, this we are selling. Yeah, the this estate we are selling. Royal Finesse, we are sold out. We have no houses to sell. So how many houses do you have? To sell here. Yeah. We have 39 houses left now. I, you in know, total. in total. Yeah. Do you believe that I can sell the 39 houses? I know God can do amazing things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, we have to do this. Uh. It's by force. Yeah, I'm not even going to beg you that, oh, please buy a house or whatever. You know how we do it. It's by force for an African to support an African. If an African woman is doing something, you know that African women really know how to, I mean, take care of things. They're in nature. So, you know what? If you're a Kenyan, if you live in the diaspora, how much is the house? 16 million Kenyan shillings. 16 million Kenyan shillings. This is roughly around $158,000. Okay? See, $158,000, you can't buy this in Ghana. So if you are even from Ghana, different African countries, you can invest in Kenya, buy one of these houses today. Please let them know. Um, let me know if they finish buying the house. I, I just need 39 people, but I know 60 people are going to come. But get the people who have the money. C can you show me the yeah, showroom? And definitely. Then, thank you. So when I, it's by force. When I was starting to mm -hmm. build houses, I wanted to build a house that I can live in. Okay. So I... I, I started with Royal Finesse and the people said they could not relate to it <laughs> because they felt like it was very grandiose. We had the chandeliers and all that. So here I thought um, to try and get into the lifestyle of many other people. And so this is what we came up with. Welcome to Royal Gates. Thank you. Oh, wow. Mm. Hmm. This is the showroom, eh? This is the show house. It's so beautiful. Wow. Jeez. Um, I've, I've always wanted to have spaces that are very warm, that are very homely, that you look forward to come to 
every evening when you're tired at work and you're feeling like you know life is not going the way you want it to when you come home you relax and this is uh, i wanted an ambience that is very calming mm. that is very um inviting for you to come and for your children to just come and be in this space and enjoy each other's company how many bedrooms are this it's a four bedroomed house um um to master in suits and guest bedroom on suits um this is our kitchen I really want to know why must one buy one of these houses? Um, I feel every space is very well thought out. Um, the lounge, the bathrooms, the bedrooms, all of them. Because when I get to build, I build as if I'm going to live in that house. And I try to put my shoes into the person living in that house and to try and think through every space. And uh, what are the most important things for me when I go into a house? I want to go to a house that I won't have to change anything. Mm. I don't want to change the doors. I don't want to change the kitchen, the tiles. I don't want to change anything. And so when I get to buy the finishes that I'm buying for them, I try to get as much the best quality for that price, for the price that I'm, uh, I, can, I can achieve. Mm. My objective is to build a house that is going to be impress you so much that when you hear your sister or your brother or your colleague looking for a house, you're going to recommend Sherry's properties. Go with Leah. Whatever houses she's building, you buy. And that is how, by God's grace, we've been able to get buyers from, their, from Royal Finesse buying here and even asking if they maybe are not able to afford this house, asking what cheaper option are you coming up with next? We want to invest in you. We want to buy your properties. And that's, uh, that is what makes the difference for us. I just want to say congratulations. You've done something that I believe it's going to inspire the younger generation. And um, if you have a message for Africans, what would that message be? Uh, the message would be believe in ourselves. Believe in yourself. The Bible says, if you can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. Believe that you have what it takes to get out of the mess that you may be in. For me, it was to get out of poverty in every way. Was I going to provide for my siblings? Was I, am I able to provide? Am I able to help others? It's not about you. It's not about me, how much money I can get in this world. How many years do I have to live? Um, we are here for what, 70, 80 years. If we are lucky, even get to that 100. After that, I'm gone. So what can I, what impact am I able to do? And we can only do that if we are able to create wealth for ourselves. We cannot be beggars. We cannot keep boring people. Our answers are not with others. We have the answers ourselves. The resources are within us. Work hard, dream big, believe that you can achieve that what you dream. And the world is going to, we, we can achieve all that dream that we can achieve. The world will be our playing ground. Yeah. Um, you see, there are so many people who say that it's not possible in Africa. Mm. And I, you know why I'm so proud of you? Because you never left the continent. You managed to achieve whatever you've achieved right here in the continent. Do you think that there are opportunities for Africans to grab on the continent? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I read a book that once said, if there are no opportunities, create those opportunities, right? We have to believe that we have what it takes to do what other people have done. People dreamt, they looked at birds and they invented the plane. Imagine that. So something that has not been done was unthinkable. Somebody dreamt of it and achieved it. What are we not able to achieve? We have how many resources in this Africa? What don't we have? We have the land. We have the numbers. So all we need to do is believe in us. Believe that those results are in us. We can do it. Whatever skill set that you need, we can, we can employ it. We can bring even people who have their skill set to come and help us. But we have to know that res that responsibility lies in us. That responsibility is not with anyone. Nobody is going to come to help Africa. We have to help Africa. Yeah, if, that's our responsibility on earth. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? What I, I'm sorry to say, but I'll change the leadership of Africa. I'll just change the governance of Africa where we have leaders who have the best interest of Africa in their hearts. Well, she's trying to say that we don't have leaders that have best interest of Africa in their heart. I'm not the one who said it. She said it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you so much for talking to me. I really appreciate your time. And um, thanks for sharing your story with me. 
And um, I want to tell you guys that this is such an inspiring story. And for us to help her build what she started, it's by force for us to buy the property. See, if after I release this video and I call her in 10 days and she tells me that the property is not sold out, I'm going to be mad at each and every one of you. Help me share this video. Let the world hear his story. My name is Mr. Ghana, baby, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. Do me a favor, subscribe and be part of this awesome family and let's reach a million. Thank you. And I'm going to see you in the next one. I am my peace out.